two sugar cubes, a few dashes of Angostura bitters, muddled, two ounces of bourbon, stirred to incorporate, one big ice cube, and garnished with an orange peel. Getting sick a lot as a kid numbed me out to whatever ailments would come my way as an adult. Most things could be fixed with enough fluids, gargling salt water, and chugging cough syrup. But being a sick Vietnamese kid also meant doing a lot of Vietnamese home remedies. From sitting under a blanket with a boiling pot of herbs and inhaling, using a coin to scratch away any impurities in the body, to suction cup therapy. Seemingly primitive, but definitely not useless. At least as a placebo, anyway. One of the most prominent things that was my go-to, even if I wasn't sick, is the yao. Yao is a medicated oil. Some of you may be familiar with Tiger Balm or Vicks VapoRub. But there are many other concoctions on the market. From a vodka-esque white flower balm to the green eagle oil, a reminiscent of absinthe. Regardless of color, all yao are variations of camphor and menthol. They're essentially bengay with herbs and spices thrown in. If I didn't grow up with this stuff, I'd say it's fake. But I've been conditioned to use this brown oil on everything. Bruises, itches, mosquito bites, for warmth, congestion, or whatever. A parent-approved Swiss army knife at my disposal. It's herbal, permeating scent gave me the impression that it was sweet, so I was always curious as to how it tasted. The deep amber color and memories are probably tied to my personal attachment to the old-fashioned. There's a thin line between medicine and poison, and the origins of bartending and pharmacy were the guardians of that divide. Whichever confidant you sought behind that countertop, their values were the same. Customer service, holistic healing, and pride from a crafted product. It's disheartening to see individuals and companies give up those sacred vows for greed and power. This appropriately named cocktail represents how things once were, compassionate and curious, and how they could have been, generosity over avarice. Taking another whiff, the cocktail transports me back to a time where I could be sick without consequence. Watching Spongebob on Nickelodeon and eating plain kanji with soy sauce until I fell asleep. It reminds me of whatever home remedies imparted on me as my parents, without a lick of medical knowledge, scrambled to find anything that would make their only son feel better. The warmth of bourbon and soft, bittersweet additions make for a melancholy yet inviting drink that opens up the soul as much as it does the nostrils. Upon reflection, it may inspire us to be better than we were. Maybe it'll remind us of our inherent flaws and reintroduce us to a little humility. Or maybe we'll all just get drunk. Either way, cheers. Thank you.